If you look back at the recent history of fly fishing, you'll find that streamer fishing was a different game. A streamer was something you tied on when dries and wets didn't work or when the water was too high and dirty to fish anything else. Modern streamer fishing looks a lot different. Fly fishers now sometimes fish them throughout the day and not just at opportunistic moments. And the flies have gotten a lot bigger. In this show, we'll explore how streamer fishing has evolved and how to take advantage of this exciting and visual method of fly fishing. Oh yeah, nice fish! That fish has already refused that fly, and you're gonna have to try just a slightly different pattern. The roll cast pickup is a great cast to use in a lot of fishing situations. This is a beautiful wild trout from a small stream. Just a gorgeous little fish. I say hit that bank. Let's go to that grass bed. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing. Yellowstone Teton Territory. Crazy Rainbow Ranch. Adipose Boatworks. Global Rescue. Trout Unlimited. Oscar Blues Brewery. You can catch big trout on nymphs and dry flies, but most experienced anglers know that to catch the biggest trout in the river, you need to fish big flies. Large trout don't feed as often as smaller trout, and they may feed only once a day or even once every few days. When they leave their protected lies to feed, unless a heavy hatch is in progress, they're more likely to look for bigger morsels they can capture with less energy, bait fish, frogs, mice, and large crayfish. So we're in down East Maine on Grand Lake Stream, home of 20th century streamer fishing. A lot of the classic patterns that came out of, uh, of the streamer world came from here. Things like the gray ghost and, and various bucktails. Some of these flies were designed to be cast in rivers. But a traditional way to fish streamers is also to troll them behind a slow-moving canoe. Although these flies are still effective nearly anywhere, we've come a long way in streamer development with many exciting new fly patterns and techniques. So you wouldn't think in 44 degree water that a fish would come up for something, especially something as big as a streamer. But I had thrown a streamer into that fast water earlier. As soon as it hit the water, the fish came up and rolled on it and didn't take it. And then I fished and fished and fished and didn't catch anything. So I came up here to this faster water, which common sense tells you that there shouldn't be fish in here when water's this cold. They should be in the deep, slow water. But sure enough, there was this pretty brook trout up there that ate a good-sized streamer. God, look at those spots. Fly tires and anglers in Michigan and the Rockies have, in the past 20 years, modified the size, shape, and action of streamers to better imitate larger food sources, and in some cases, have just developed flies that are nothing more than modified versions of spin lures. Large wild trout have been known to eat seven inch stock trout, and in some rivers, it's a primary source of food for them. So we know the traditional two to three inch trout streamer can be improved upon. There are times when a smaller streamer just does not trigger the aggression or meet the calorie need of a large hungry trout. To get these big enticing streamers, tires often use long flowing materials like marabou and rabbit fur. And to get the length needed, they often make articulated patterns that incorporate a hook on a trailing stinger to take advantage of short strikes. Streamer fishing is so exciting, it's so visual, and it's violent, but it, it isn't always on. You would think you could just throw a streamer out here and a big brown trout, if he's around, would just jump on it, but that's not the case. Some days a streamer bite is on, some days it's not. Luckily, today the streamer bite is on for us. In order to effectively fish streamers in rivers or lakes, it's important to use the right fly line, or at least a modification of your line. 
If you fish big, deep rivers or those with a heavy flow, you'll need to go beyond your standard floating line, especially because many of these modern streamers use deer hair heads, which buoy the fly up in the water. And many modern techniques call for using an unweighted or neutrally buoyant fly on a sinking line to be most effective. The quickest and easiest way to fish a sinking line is to attach a sinking poly leader to your floating fly line. You then just add a three foot piece of 2X or 1X tippet to the sinking section to turn your floating line into a sink tip line. So we've been fishing a bunch of fairly shallow channels this morning, and we're going down into some deeper section of river with some deeper holes. And I've been using just a floating line with a weighted fly, and that's been fine. We've got some fish, but um, I'm gonna need to get deeper now. And I don't really wanna switch lines, so there's an easy solution is to take a poly leader, sinking poly leader, and put it on the end of your floating line. So I'm gonna rig that up now. These sinking poly leaders are seven feet of high density fly line, so it sinks very quickly and it's tapered, so it casts like a fly line. So all I'm gonna do is loop this onto my floating line. And then at the tippet end, you don't need a tapered leader or anything. Um, what all I do is I put a bimini twist in a piece of 1X, 2X fluorocarbon and it's just level. You don't want a tapered leader because you want this thing to stay down low when you're stripping it in. So the bimini twist gives you a little bit of extra strength that you're not connection. It also gives you a little bit of a taper on your tippet. Do you normally streamer fish with a streamer line or with a floating line? Uh, you know, I usually use a floating line and I put those I put those poly leaders on if I want to get deeper. Yeah, poly leaders are awesome. Yeah, they're just, I mean, I don't, yeah. I don't think I own a sink tip anymore. And if it's really heavy, uh, I sell them with trout, but if it's really heavy water, I'll put on a depth charge. Yeah. Ooh, there's a fish. There he is. Oh, good one too. Not a bad one at all. Switching to that uh, sinking line. Yep, get it down in front yeah. of him. Yeah, that's a good fish. I've noticed sometimes when they get lazy, they'll watch those things swim over their head, but mm -hmm. if they don't swim right in front of their face. Oh, what is he, stuck on something? No, he just, he's just he's strong. Big. They're just strong, <laughs> super strong. Oh, that's a nice fish. Hey, stay wow. out. <laughs> they don't like the world coming down on them. Whoa, man. Ah. 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 Okay. Whoa. <laughs> there you go. All right. Woo. Good job. Good job. <laughs> Poly leaders are fine for smaller rivers and slower currents, but for water over three feet deep or very heavy flows, you'll probably need a sink tip line which has a front sinking section plus a rear section of floating line. Your general purpose streamer line for most rivers and streams is a sink tip line with 12 to 15 feet of high density sinking line. It's ideal for getting a streamer down in the water column fast and keeping it there throughout the retrieve. For the very largest rivers, I also sometimes use a depth charge line in heavy water, which incorporates a full 30-foot sinking tip with an intermediate running line. It's your choice what kind of knot you use to attach a streamer to a heavy tippet like this. Some anglers prefer a loop knot because they feel it allows the fly to dart and wiggle in the current better. If you fish sinking lines, it's a good idea to modify your casting. Sometimes making one short cast to get your line on the surface and then a delivery cast works well. But let's visit casting instructor Pete Kutzer to get some detailed tips on casting sinking lines. I'm gonna to talk to you about casting sinking lines and intermediate lines. When I make a cast, if I want to get a tighter loop, I like to stop right around eye level. Hi, I'm Pete Kutzer with the Orvis Fly Fishing Schools. 
Today I want to talk to you about casting sinking lines and ways you can use these really effective tools to catch fish in deep water situations. Sinking lines are great effective tools when you're fishing large bodies of water like this lake, maybe the ocean, even rivers in high water situations. With these sinking lines though, they do provide a challenge. When we cast that line out onto the water and it starts to get down deeper and deeper in the water column, we can't pick that line out back off the water to reset and make another cast. So we have to do a couple things. We can either strip this line in, get to that shorter length of line, and then start to false cast this line out, back out to our target, or we can do that roll cast pickup. Strip it into a moderate length, make a roll cast, then we can pick it up and shoot it back out. When we're fishing with these sinking lines and we have a large fly on, or even a small fly, we do have to open up our loop a little bit. We want to open up that loop just a little bit using what's called a constant tension cast or a Belgian cast. We're going to make a lower back cast bring a rod up, and then make a high overhead forward cast. This constant tension cast keeps that line under tension, like its name says, and allows us to get that fly out there with a lot less effort and gets us right on target. I'll make a low angle back cast, bring the rod up over the top, and it keeps everything nice and easy so we can deliver that fly out to our target. Low angle back cast, over the head forward cast. Low angle back cast, over the head forward cast. That constant tension, keeping that leader nice and straight, is gonna help get that fly out there with a lot less effort when we're using sinking lines. Now that you've learned about the flies and lines, let's explore how to present the fly in all kinds of water. The traditional way of fishing a streamer is to cast across the river or at 45 degrees downstream and strip back. This works well, but there are many subtleties you can incorporate into your streamer game. In streamer techniques, whether you're stripping the fly or just swinging it, keep your rod tip low and pointed at the fly. Don't think of striking. Just keep stripping until you feel the solid weight of the fish. Raising the rod tip to strike a fish may pull the fly away from a fish, and you also can't always get a solid set by using the rod. It's much better to strike with your stripping hand than quickly lifting the rod to fight the fish. Baitfish and crayfish don't often swim across current lanes, especially in faster water. They either struggle upstream or they dart downstream when being pursued by trout. By introducing a mend into your cast, either with a reach cast or by mending after the fly line hits the water, you can swim your fly upstream or downstream for longer distances than if you began your strip immediately. Additionally, an upstream mend can help to sink your fly a bit more before you start your retrieve. So sometimes when you're fishing a streamer, you want the fly to change direction. And it's really easy to do that with mends. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cast my line out here. I'm gonna start with a couple strips with the line straight. Then I'm gonna make a mend to the, to the left, make a couple strips, make a mend to the right, make a couple strips. And that streamer will dart back and forth through the water like a predator's chasing it. As with any kind of fly fishing, you need to experiment with your retrieves until you find what works. In streamer fishing, it's especially important as changing conditions can change the mood of the fish even from one day to the next. So there's a number of ways you can fish streamers. One is you can just cast across the current or quartering downstream and just let the fly swing. Maybe put a little mend in there to get the fly down a little bit, and then just let it swing in the current. Do nothing else. Let it come all the way around, strip it a few times back to you, pick up and cast again. You can fish a streamer upstream and kind of strip it to back to you. You can strip it fast, or you can strip it with some pauses and let it flutter in the current. You don't have to worry about detecting a strike because the fish will really hammer this fly. And the other way you can do it is you can take that cross stream delivery and instead of swinging the fly, you can strip it and make it move. Um, sometimes you wanna strip steadily. Sometimes you wanna do maybe a couple little strips and then pause. Uh, mix it up because you never know on any given day what 
approach and what retrieve the fish are gonna prefer. It's always a smart idea to listen to guides or just watch local anglers fish streamers. Here, Blake Jackson explains his streamer philosophy on the North Platte River in Wyoming. I, I think there's you know multiple techniques that we use uh, when streamer fishing, but generally with a floating line, really kind of what you're doing, Tom, is, is ideal where you throw it in super tight. And my big preference is to give it two or three good strips off the bank mm -hmm. and then slow it down just a little bit in order to let it sink. Okay. And, and really primarily because we're using a floating line. If we were using a, a sink tip or, you know, like a bank robber line, that sort of thing, we mm -hmm. might, uh, you know, strip it a little quicker because we've got some tungsten tipped line to help help get some, some depth to it. But... Um, a lot of our fish will sit up in that shallow shelf right off the gate or right out of the bank, and then and then once it drops off the shelf, it's a little better to let the streamer fall slightly and, mm -hmm. and get a little bit of depth to it. And I'm I'm also a big fan of you know mending it if need be. I think a lot of folks don't you know a lot of anglers don't think about mending a streamer line, but you can often get you know, a big downstream loop to it that'll accelerate it to a point, not allowing the streamer to sink a little bit. And a downstream loop throws it parallel to the bank? Keeps yeah. It more parallel to the bank? Right, which has bank. some advantages, but but at times, you know, it also increases your speed, right? So yeah. uh, if you're if you're looking for it to sink a little bit, then, then giving it a little mend and letting it kind of fall isn't, isn't a bad thing. Mm-hmm. And I've been doing more and more kind of vertical streamer fishing, if if that makes sense, right? I mean, uh, I think any fishing is a continuous learning process, but but letting it fall a little bit and think more like like you were jigging a a streamer off the bank, where you you let it fall off the shelf and get some depth, and then give it some movement. You know, often I see a weird evolution in streamer fishing where someone's pretty good at it when they're not really good at it because they're they're so erratic and variant at times, right? And then they get kind of used to it and they get smooth and consistent and even. And in a fishery like this where we really don't have sculpins or, or uh, bait minnows that are real, um, real erratic in nature, uh, generally our fish are eating it as a wounded, you know, a wounded uh, baby minnow or another wounded fish. So, you know, kind of having the erratic movement to it is even better yet instead mm -hmm. of smooth and even and okay. consistent you know kind of varying it like you said once you find the recipe that seems to work keep going back to the well and using the same recipe versus you know changing something that's that's working for you Ooh. oh nice that looks like a brown ah. Maybe not. No, no I don't rainbow. Think so. Rainbow. Dang, the Bob is made off. We can turn it up. That's, boy, that's. Uh, that's an effective deal there. Yeah. A little bit better fish. Yeah, getting bigger. Yeah. Speed. In general, if the water temperature is below 50 degrees, you want to slow down your strips and use frequent pauses. As the water warms and trout are more likely to chase your fly a long distance, you can speed up your retrieve. I've had trout in 60 degree water chase my fly over 50 feet, right to my feet. There's a fish. Yes. On the streamer. Ooh, I think it was a brown trout too. No. Yeah. Good job. Good job. In smaller streams, where you don't have the luxury of mending line or using a sink tip line to get the fly deeper, you often need to use a heavily weighted fly on a floating line with a longer leader. You need to get the fly quickly into those deeper pockets. Sometimes, especially in slower water, 
Fishing unweighted streamers on a long leader can dredge up trout, even in bright sunlight. You know, you don't always want to just throw a streamer to the bank and rip it back to you, even from a drift boat. There are times when the fish aren't on the banks or the fish are deeper or it's bright sunlight and it's just not gonna work. So you gotta have a few other things in your bag of tricks, like dead drifting a streamer, fishing it deeper and slowly with just a little bit of motion. So to do this, you need a weighted streamer and maybe two weighted streamers or a weighted streamer and a split shot or uh, two weighted streamers and a split shot. You need to get down. And it's easiest in most water, believe it or not, with a floating line. You want a floating line with a relatively long leader, maybe nine to 12 feet long, so that you can get those flies down. You have a lot of control with a floating line and you can manipulate those flies a lot easier with a floating line and you can see your strikes better. So to do this, of course it varies in what kind of water you're in, but you basically want to try to throw your streamer or streamers at an upstream angle and don't give them much action. So you want to throw them upstream, you want to keep a tight line all the time. So you want to strip line back to you and then occasionally maybe give it a little twitch by stripping line a little bit faster and then letting it settle. But it's not a constant stripping motion. You want the fly to, to move a little bit and then to tumble in the current. So whatever you need to do to keep a tight line, keep that fly drifting in the current, keep it deep, and then every once in a while, give it a little twitch. Come on, fish. Oh, there's one. There it is. Whoa. I'm gonna hit the anchor. Wow, that flying rooster tail through the water. <laughs> he took off. Oh, jump. Gonna be another jump too. I think. Maybe. Maybe another jump. Oh, I thought it was gonna be another jump, but I guess not. It's not a huge fish, just uh just got a lot of spunk. Nice we job, were just Tom. talking about how slow it had gotten. Tough fishing streamers in the middle of a bright sunny day. Thank you, Jeremy. You're welcome. You can fish streamers at short distances using a modified Euro nymphing technique. None of your fly line touches the water, so it helps to have a long leader over 12 feet long and a longer rod to keep fly line off the water. Use a small, heavily weighted streamer or a split shot ahead of your streamer. Lob the fly upstream and with a high rod tip, keep constant tension on the fly and twitch it slightly as it rolls down in the current. This is a deadly imitation of a sculpin or a crippled bait fish. Trout's Bay is a relatively new and fun way to fish streamers while covering a lot of water. You can do it with an ordinary fly rod or with a light two-handed rod commonly known as Trout's Bay or Micro Spay Rod. These rods offer the ability to make a much longer cast using a modified Skagit line. And they're especially useful if you have limited back cast room. A sinking head on the end of the Skagit line allows you to get your flies deeper on the swing. Sometimes when you're trying to do this, you have your back 
against the stream and you can't make a back cast. So you're forced to roll cast. And it can be tough to roll cast halfway across the river. One of the ways to do this is to use a modified uh, two-hand cast. So you can do a little snap tee or a double spay or a single spay, and that'll set you up for your roll cast, and then you can make a roll cast across the river. So I'm here in this big flat pool. I'm trying to get across there. It's very efficient, it's less tiring, and it's kind of fun. It's not going to be as pretty as with a two-handed rod because you don't have that length and that slower rod, but it works pretty well. You can swing the fly just like you would for salmon or steelhead, or you can introduce short pulses with the rod tip or with your stripping hand to move the fly. Swinging streamers is so much fun, and some days you have your heart set on it, but they don't always produce, so you have to adjust and get over it. Hanging a nymph on the end of your streamer is a great trick when other things don't work. So fishing's been tough, and when it's tough, you gotta be adaptable. Um, I've been swinging streamers through this pool, classic streamer water, and nothing. So what I did is I've got a sinking tip on here, short leader, and a little streamer, and then a hare's ear nymph dropped off that. Not something I'd normally do, but, um, you know, you gotta try different things. When things aren't working, you have to switch it up. And uh, so the hare's ear nymph was what caught this cute little brookie. Pretty fish, beautiful, beautiful shape. Big trout, especially browns, do a lot of feeding at night. Night fishing requires special care. First, never fish alone at night, always go with a buddy. Second, know your water well. Never fish a stream you have not scouted during the day. You need to know where the submerged logs and drop-offs are. It's easy to see at night during a full moon, and you can try it, but from my experience, a dark night is always more productive when night fishing for trout. This is mainly a game for late spring through early fall. Warm, muggy nights seem to be the best. The best places to fish at night are typically those you would ignore during the day. Big trout move into the shallows, particularly backwaters and tails of pools at night, to hunt for baitfish, mice, and frogs. Your cast should be short, and your leader should be short and stout, about 5 feet to 20 pound test, because there's no room for playing fish at night when you can't see submerged snags. Flies to use at night include mice, unweighted streamers, or streamers with a deer hair head that make a wake on the surface. Black streamers are most visible at night, so keep your flies on the dark side. This is no place for slim bait fish imitations. Most of this fishing will be by feel, so one of the best ways is to cast across the current and just let your fly swing and wake on the surface. You can introduce little twitches by throwing in a few strips, but keep them small and slow. Strikes will typically not be vicious. You may hear a splash, or you may just feel a solid weight on the end of your line. Since you're fishing by feel, don't strike if you hear a splash. Strike once you feel the weight of the fish. Don't baby the fish. You've got a stout leader on the end. Get them in quickly before they run you into a snag in the dark. Some of the most exciting trout fishing is with mice because all the action happens on the surface. And mice are not only for fishing after dark. In some places, under the right conditions, trout will smash mouse patterns in the middle of the day. A mouse is a big piece of protein and mice trigger the hunter-killer instinct of big trout. It's worth it for a trout to move 10 feet for a mouse because the energy expended in chasing a mouse is worth it. There are lots of mouse patterns available, and they all work well. Some are more difficult to cast than others, especially with a standard trout rod. You don't need a giant mouse pattern to be effective, and color doesn't seem to be that important as long as the fly looks alive when it swims and creates a disturbance that attracts trout from a distance. Many mouse patterns are meant to catch fishermen instead of trout. I doubt if trout will refuse your fly if it doesn't have the right color ears or whiskers. But they sure are fun to tie and fish. You need a floating line, a relatively stiff 
short leader, like a regular knotless trout leader, cut back to about six feet and ending in a minimum of 1x or OX, which is about 12 to 15 pounds break strength. Cast your fly to a likely spot, sometimes right up on the bank. Try a twitch and pause retrieve or a slow steady retrieve. Sometimes just swinging the fly in the current, especially in the tails of pools, can be effective. Oh, broke off. So I did something really stupid there. I just broke off a fish. And uh, what happened was, had caught a nice fish a couple casts before, hooked another fish, put a little pressure on it, and the tippet snapped in the middle of the tippet. They're big fish, there's a lot of rocks, and they're pretty abrasive. I didn't, I wasn't smart enough to check my leader after that fish. And you, what you want to do is after you catch a big fish, look at your knot and then look at your leader, look for signs of abrasion, make sure that your leader is still sound. You'll get a lot of short strikes on mice. Fish may try to drown a mouse, so resist the impulse to strike by raising your rod tip. Just keep stripping, and if you don't connect, keep moving the fly, as the trout may come back for a second pass. Keep stripping until you feel the solid weight of a fish. When you're on a new river, just trying to find out if any large trout are present, a mouse fly is an exciting way to at least locate them. So we're here in a different river today. It's the uh, outlet of a lake, and um, it's as you can see, it's wider, shallower, but there's a central uh, current out here where it's deeper, where we think the trout are. Uh, not knowing anything else, I'm gonna start out with a mouse fly, see what happens. So this is the biggest brook trout of my life. I can tell you that for sure, because I've never caught one over 15 inches before. Wow. Okay, wow. Oh my God. <laughs> Look at those colors. The surface strikes to mouse imitations are some of the most adrenaline pumping moments in fly fishing. But unless you have your heart set on fishing surface flies, conventional streamers will land big trout for you on a more reliable basis. Whoa, whoa! Was that fish, was that fish taking my streamer there? Because the streamer was kind of deep. Was that fish actually? A big fish, though. Oh my God, look at this fish. Oh, and the colors. Whoa! <laughs> oh, look at how deep that fish is. <laughs> ah. So since we, uh, the dry fly was fun, but since we switched to the streamer, we've had a fish on almost every cast in here. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> oh my God. I've never seen a brook trout jump like that. We're going. We're going for a ride. He, you can get him in here, I think. Before he, before he gets Walk up to him. 
Wow! Oh. So this is definitely the biggest brook trout of my life. Mia, how, how much does that fish weigh, do you think? I'd say maybe about six and a half. Six and a half pounds, wow. I love having to chase fish down oh, through yeah. fast water. You know, it's just, it's just so, it just adds so much to it. Oh, yeah. Especially when the waiting's tough. Ooh, there's a fish, a little brown. That way she'll turn over tight in these bushes, you know? That's a pretty brown. Isn't it? Yeah. Look Looks lock haven almost. Yeah. Thanks for watching our show on modern streamers. You know, you don't always catch big fish on streamers, but it's always fast paced, it's exciting, sometimes it's visual. When you're fishing streamers, don't ignore the little tiny traditional streamers. Sometimes they're more subtle and more effective than the big, ugly, articulated things. You'll notice that we concentrated more on streamer fishing technique than we did on choosing fly patterns and colors. Honestly, I think picking a streamer is more a matter of luck and whimsy, and in the long run, it might not matter that much. Sure, there are some days when a particular streamer pattern seems to light up the fish, but I'm not sure that any old streamer might work. Pick a streamer, fish it various ways, and then if it doesn't work, it just might not be a streamer day. The unpredictability is what makes fly fishing fun. The Orvis Guide to Fly Fishing is supported by Orvis Fly Fishing Yellowstone Teton Territory Crazy Rainbow Ranch Adipose Boat Works Global Rescue Trout Unlimited Oscar Blues Brewery